and good morning. So I was spent some time speaking about the reality and listening yesterday to Mark and, and Bernard, and thank you very much for inviting us to join with you. Because in reality, it's better, I always say that the future belongs to the doers. It's a lot of times we can speak, but unless we can put investments in what we want to do, we will never be able to create a change. And some numbers have been shared, and, and I will spend a little bit of time just showing about the region that we are. So if you look at our business across Eastern Africa, which is eight countries, so what's missing there is Somalia, naturally you see a major concentration of younger people. Estimated 250 million people, and my colleague uh, uh, spoke earlier about the challenges we see. Over 35% of that population is young people. And we look at that as a challenge. I mean, many years ago, I, I remember the Economist, you know, almost 20 years ago, uh, talking about the opportunities in the continent for the younger people. But unless they are engaged or they are deployed into economic activity, earning a wage which is decent, and dignified, you will not be able to build the opportunities. If they can't buy a house and pay school fees and pay their Medicare, there is no value. As a young leader, I always say, they need a dignified job that pays below, above the minimum wage. And so the integrated model we have, and in the future this is becoming a bigger challenge. When I look on the ground level, what we have is an estimate of three million people joining early childhood development. That is just within East Africa. And the numbers that you spoke earlier, about 100 million, in the, next, in the next 10 years is actually a reality. Now, we've never had such a kind of centric growth of population in our market. And, and I will speak about what we do or what we think is possible. One of our programs is to really invest back. The future of our businesses, and you're looking at data globally, is that we haven't been able, many companies, and I'm sure that you know, Professor Karama can confirm that, larger companies of 50 years ago, more than half those companies don't exist anymore. Neither are they the top 50 globally, what used to be. And yet, more than ever, we need more companies today for the younger population that's growing. We're not creating as many businesses over the, over the world, and the small business enterprise aligned with what was spoken yesterday is what I think we need to invest in. So I'll give you, this is at the core of our strategy for our business. So I'll give you some data in the last three years. So nearly half a million businesses have closed in our markets. Now, for a bank of our nature, businesses is the food for what we run our enterprise on. If businesses are becoming fewer every year, it means our long-term sustainability for our business doesn't exist. And we have almost 7.5 million businesses in our markets. The, the, the few who are known to be registered are 1.5 million. So you have this group of 6 million that nobody even cares about. Of course, as a lender, we will never be able to support and provide resources for them. So our view is... We always assume that young people can naturally start a business. Now, business, building an enterprise is very deliberate. I always say that you need to reimagine new possibilities. A youngster, I mean, a 21-year-old person or 20-year-old, it's very difficult to go and start a business. Now, you can go and sell some stuff on the street, but it doesn't create an income. If you're gonna get $10 a day, it's not, I mean, that's probably on the higher side. Most of our people get less than $5 a day. You can't build an income levels of a life for businesses. They may not be able to qualify for loans from financial institutions. So what we say is, why don't you just put them into a program? So part of our partnership, and I'll speak a little bit today about reimagining the capability of scaling our partnership for shared value. And that's what we do either with Safaricom, that Bob spoke about yesterday, what we are doing with some of the technical schools. And I'm a strong believer that not every single young African must go to a university to get a degree, because that's not where the jobs are. The jobs are gonna be in different technical skills. So we set up a technical program, which we invest as a bank. We set up 1.5% of our income directly, and another 1.5% indirectly. We're the only institution that sets up 3% of our income to reinvest back in community to build our future business. And I believe that uh, organizations that will be successful in the 21st century are those organizations that will remodel their business beliefs and rethink their model of running enterprises to run a long-term race. And I've had challenges as a CEO. I mean, I've spoken to shareholders in New York and London and saying, what business are you looking for? Do you want a short-term, high fast-track returns, or do you want long-term returns that are steady and sustainable? And so in the last few years, Mark, you'd be impressed to see that our shareholder profile has changed. So the high street venture capitalists are not our shareholders anymore. I always say, find another stock to make an investment. Because we're running a lot, so you have to be very bold as, 
as a CEO running a, a business which is public. So today we have long-term funds, you know, people like the Harvard Pension Scheme, which is looking at that 30-year scheme, and those kind of partnerships. So we, we can't always run on a quarter-to-quarter -quarter profile just because, and our shareholders see that perhaps we have to share value beyond ourselves to all stakeholders in our business, which I think is what the challenge for public companies is today. So we set up, this is a very three-pronged three approach. So many programs today just give you a training. Now our technical schools just give you some data that will surprise you. We can, ha we can recruit two million children into technical schools every year. Our current enrollment is 90,000. So we are not even using 10%, not even 5%. And children say, but they have no capabilities. One way of building those schools is to give them students and sponsor those students, get the teachers to be hired back and buy equipment. So we sponsor every child, so 10,000 every year. And this year, we are hoping to scale it up to 100,000. So that's, the scalability is the biggest objective. And Jane may have spoken about yesterday. Now, 200 vocational schools, those will be some, they were very average. You couldn't see a single equipment to train a mechanic, a carpenter, an electrician. And in our markets, we have, one of the big projects that Zioka spoke about is about affordable housing. We are importing all the plumbers. We are importing all the electricians. I mean, this is a contradiction. And that's where, our, so why should they come from China to do the job when you can build the skills? So this kind of program trains our younger people around, how do I then go in? And many times when they graduate, in reality, they're not ready for business. I mean, I have to dissuade you from this belief that young people just, just naturally, they can build businesses through what I call osmosis. <laughs> you have to learn, you have to invest. Any of you who has run a business know the steps, the effort. And the challenge we're seeing in our continent, they then go into what they call tenderpreneurs. They go into a deal, but less than 0.01% ever succeed in a tenderpreneur dream. So can you put the entire 30 million Africans or young people in the country into that 0.1%? And that's why this program for me is very exciting for our business. So we, we partner with county government. So this model, we, I love, it's business of the future must learn to co-create. It's not about competing with our partner, it's about creating a shared value that is bigger so I am better off being a 10% market share for a billion dollar business than being 100% of $10,000 business. And a lot of CEOs don't see that model. We are always fighting for the middle, for the small. So we partner with the county governments. They put in funds into this kind of a program because they can see the youth. It's the biggest challenge. Counties are being asked. In fact, the biggest challenge is governors have is people send them CVs, graduates, First classes, and they have nothing to do. Now, there's no tragedy in our market where a first class student is selling, is selling some kind of second hand goods on the street. That skill and talent, we needed to create solutions for our country and for the economy and for the continent. Now, unfortunately, so this program helps them to run. This is one of the best schools we work with. And today I'll only speak about two areas. Our program covers engineering, it covers um, hospitality, we do cover agriculture or agribusinesses, we, we do cover automobile, we do cover technology, but today I just pick up two areas, and our target is to keep half a million businesses, each creating five jobs. So we may actually be a much more competitive to government in creating jobs. Government creates less than 100,000 jobs. We are saying we will create three times your jobs, and that's where our youth will be. So Mirama is a school for smart farming. Our younger people don't like, you know, farming is, there's some swag you have to bring back to farming. This is the new generation we are talking about. So they train them about hydroponics, and you will see about what, what happens. And they also don't have land. The challenge about the cities and most countries, land is becoming less and less. So they go into this school, and we've trained so far 14,000 people about how do you build, and this is the graduation you saw earlier. Uh, so the first phase is you train them, they, are they get scholarships, they graduate. Most times that is the end of an investment program. But we take them ahead and show them, we now invest in their business development. And so this is what you call the technology for farming that is called hydroponic technology. And it addresses the concern about food security. Because then it's also cleaner, you can trace the products that are going into the food you're putting on the table, but you can also be able to employ the youth in something they will love. I say it is a vert vertical farm. It's a new thing for Caroline. So everyone has an horizontal farm. This one you build upstairs, correct? Because many people don't have that op opportunity in our market. And those skills, I'll give you the numbers which excite you. So this is the outcome. So that, that is his farm going up. There are four stacks. And this, he actually has customers. So Mirama, which is our partner, buys and supplies the retail stores. So if you think about, in those who are in Kenya, a zucchini, zucchini will have a real-time supplier 
for every day for the product they need. Correct. And, and therefore, this, and they can do anything. They can do lettuce, they can do these tomatoes, they can be able to harvest. You see, 1.8 million. Why are we investing as a bank in this program? Because these are the future customers. This is future-proofing our organization for the next 50 years. Nothing excites me about these young people because they say if it was not because of our investment partnership, they will never be who they are. We give them dignity, we give them respect, we give them a life, and they stay with us. So, so even our shareholders see the point that if you run away from your community that you invest in, you will never be able to succeed in your enterprise that you're going to build in the future. Now, 1.8 million is an average of average $20,000 a year. It's almost impossible for our young people today to get even $10,000 a year in terms of income. And I always insist, give them a business that pays an, a dignified income. Yeah. Because sometimes we count small enterprises that cannot even deliver a, even a 5%. And so, Caroline, in this element, we have to be very bold. And I've argued this even with the head of state. You cannot be able to say, I'm a hawker in town, I get 100 shillings, and I'm in business. You will not even pay pass fare. And Africa cannot be built in itself by hawkers who cannot pay a single school fees, cannot pay a single business, cannot afford, then affordable housing will not be able to be achieved. Achieved. This is the off-taker. This is now really the supermarket. So they have done the job. So the good thing about this is integrating the business within the value chain. So this is the largest retail store, the Naiva supermarkets. From no, they actually contracted the young people. And this is the kind of innovation you create. So they are very deliberate. They are very consistent. You can see the quality. They can trust them. And, and so the youth, all they have to do is to do their job, do the training, get the hydroponic farm, do the warehouse that we have, and then deliver to market. And the cycle continues. And this is one area for me to be excited. We believe that in this kind of environment, you can create a million jobs. You can create almost 150,000 new businesses. And agribusinesses is good for the younger people. Otherwise, if they're going to go to the old tradition of farm, and they spend the whole 12 hours working for no income of 200 shillings a, year, um, a day, you will never encourage our younger people to do in that business model. So that's one part of it. And that business is for us then is enabling us to lend between half a billion and one billion dollars in our business in the next three years. That is 20% growth of our business. And that's why it is, I always say that this is at the core of our strategy of our businesses in terms of growth in the long run. The second person is an exciting one because Titus was, this is on automobiles. In our market, we still buy a lot of uh, second hand vehicles. And that's what we do. But we have no place to service them, no place to maintain them. So. Those who live in Nairobi know about a place called Grogan, or Grogan in Nairobi, where he was a spanner boy, completely with no skill. And you can see what he's doing. And Titus spent time coming into, into the school where he was trained. He spent time about training, giving the skills. And so we give them a full scholarships. We partner with the school, the Eastland School of Technology, the school that trained themselves. Now he learns to build business. And this, the program for the second phase, we then give them funding. So we fund them. The bank has then guaranteed that if you establish the businesses with the business partners, like your finance person, your marketing person, uh, and your legal person, you set up a real business, we'll give you a loan. So we guarantee you a fund up to $10,000. So he set up the first garage somewhere near, not far away from town. And today, he runs four garages in two years employing 14 young people and an income of 1.2 million shillings a year. <laughs> now, this is, this is the future client of our business today. This we will never be able to have gotten. So this kind of, so when you ask him, he says, I'm very happy to be a director of my company. In the past, I was a spawner by on the street. So I always say in the words of Nelson Mandela, never underestimate every person can start today and have a greater ending through a shared value of belief that we have as an institution. And that, for me, is many stories we have. So the commitment we made is a half a billion dollars investment in these businesses in the next five years. And that is what will build a 20% annualized growth in our businesses. And through that participation, we are still delivering the highest return to our shareholders. We are still the strongest growth institution. So you can co-create that investing for communities today is better for business, is better for, for our shareholders, is better for our stakeholders. And we've been recognized. I mean, just the first, I will only speak as I close. Last year, you know, the Financial Times picked up this program globally, and, and the first award uh, of, of, in terms of investment on a shared value basis, and most of you know the Financial Times. Jane was in London to get the recognition for the investment. And we're not doing it for this. But this is a confirmation that the philosophy of investment for businesses 
should be more beyond just one element of a shareholder investment. Look at all, all partners. Look at all stakeholders. And I think that is a role that CEOs of entities must drive to build a future-proof organization. Thank you, and God bless you.